need this shit in your life. 2021 has been a hell of a year, both good and bad. But one of the better things to come out of this year is me jumping back into unsigned hype. I've discovered so much awesomeness on this show. All types of different projects, all types of different genres, and today, obviously, is no exception. Today we're talking about the sci-fi noir comic Area 51, The Helix Project. It's currently three issues in, with the Kickstarter campaign for issue four coming soon. The link for said campaign is going to be in the description, so if anything I'm saying is enticing to you, make sure you go through and bookmark it so that when it launches, you get a notification. Now it's hard to go too into detail about what exactly makes this story so good without giving away a lot of spoilers, but I'll do my best. First, let's talk about the art. It's great. It's nothing too flashy. It's actually really gritty, which I think lends itself to this story and its themes perfectly. I am 8,000% here for telling your story with your art just as much as your words. I mean, it's a comic book for a reason. And this comic fully takes advantage of the medium. The art serves the story very well. Because it's a much darker, grittier story, it's not like really super bright colors. Everything from clothes and skin tones to even the special effects, they all have this really earthy quality to them. The city itself feels very lived in. It's not clean or fake. Everything just feels very real. But the big sell of this title is the story and the theme written magnificently by Trevor Fernandez Linkovich. It's just dripping with mystery and intrigue. It gives you just enough puzzle pieces to put together what's going on, but not enough to make it easy. It has you asking questions, the best kind of questions. I recently read all three of the previous issues, and each one builds on the one that came before it. It's basically the story about this guy named Kent and him coming to terms with his past, some trauma that he's been through surrounding the loss of his father. There's a lot that deals with concepts like revenge, dual nature of people, and there's even some deeper themes that deal with having great power and doing something great with it, but not being perceived as heroic, usually just because of your appearance and what that brings with it. That's exactly what ends up getting his father killed. When he saves a little girl from getting hit by a car, and when the cops show up, they thank him with well, Kent already said it best. The cruel thunder at the end of a barrel. Currently, he's kind of a down on his luck, living mundanely from day to day type of guy. He's still seriously dealing with the passing of his father, and he really has no direction or purpose. He does eventually find purpose in the form of a strange young woman who is surprisingly knowledgeable about various things about Kent. Obviously, you know, his name and everything, considering they've never met as far as he's concerned. But also the fact that there's more to him than what's apparent on the surface. That takes us right into issue two, where as these two get more acquainted, she eventually takes him to the reason why she contacted him. And we find out that it's the cop who took his father's life. So now Kent has to face his first moral challenge. What does he do when he's confronted with the man who not only ended his father's life, but essentially ruined his too? Like I said, lots of deep stuff here. Then they don't waste any time. So we do see what's hinted at before, that Kent is also able to transform like his father was, for reasons that aren't made apparently clear, but based on the back and forth they do from the main plot to the sort of background plot, we can put those pieces together and also, you know, the title, it kind of hints that it all deals with a lot of Roswell, X-Files type stuff, which actually is something I haven't read a whole lot in comics, and I think is a really undertapped genre right now. No shade to cape stories, but there's more to do with comics than just cape stories. After going full Hulk smash on dude's face, Kent stands there with the gun in hand and he's faced with a choice. It strikes me as a sort of deconstruction of superheroes in a way, where we see that Kent has the power to really do whatever he wants here, but is he going to? I figured that he's most likely not going to kill this guy, but seeing him go through the process, actually do something cathartic, but ultimately decide not to kill him, I think it was a very good choice. Oh, and then the blonde lady just decides F it and does it anyway. That's always nice. That takes us to issue three. 
Unfortunately, there was really no way I could talk about this story and do it justice without doing some spoilers. But for issue three, I really don't want to go into a whole lot of detail because I feel like this is where we really start to get tremendous amounts of beautiful, not only character development, but lore tying up some of these loose ends, seeing how these seeds that have been planted in the first couple issues are growing. So all I'm gonna say is whether he likes it or not, Kent is fully involved in this world now, and he's gonna have to dive in and get waist deep, eyeball deep in it. Issue three ends with a great action scene and an absolutely jaw-clenching cliffhanger. Definitely head on over to that Kickstarter, which is linked in the description. It's not live yet, but you can bookmark it so that when it does go live, you'll know. Also, check out issues one through three, which you can buy right now through Pocket Watch Press. And that's going to be all for me today. Thank you all for watching and listening. Make sure you tune in on the next episode of Unsigned Hype, where I take a look at another hidden gem. But until then, I'm Animane, and I'll talk to you all later. Deuces.